This is what we're going to talk about today. It's an oxalic acid vaporizer for uh, a beehive in order to kill varroa mites. And um, I'm going to cover the, the casting of this and the machining of this. And then I'll talk briefly about uh, what's in this box right here. But honestly, if you're wanting a how-to step-by-step how to make this, this is not it. Uh, I'm just going to kind of give you some ideas on how um, I made this. And I started to, almost started to not even put this video out there because there's not enough uh, detail to it. And I really wasn't willing to, to put out you know, uh, an 8 series video on how to do this because I don't really think there's going to be that much uh, interest in it anyway. Um, and now it's done so I didn't film it so it's kind of would be too late to do that. So anyway, uh, now that I've discouraged you from watching it, uh, let's get started. All right, here's the pattern uh, for the bowl for the oxalic acid vaporizer. It's a 3D printed pattern. It's got uh, a location hole already in there. I, I wish I had put two of them because it can still twist, but hopefully this will work out okay. So I'm gonna get it rammed up. Let's see how this one did. This is the oxalic acid vaporizer. And it looks like it did very well. You can see why that leaked. I had it off center. Somehow, I don't know how I did that, but... This is the cap to the oxalic acid vaporizer. It looks really good. Okay, I've got our part in the mill, and I'm just going to flatten off the top. I've got it in here with a couple of V-blocks. I wish I had bigger ones, but that's all I've got. So hopefully I'll just take it easy, and hopefully I won't knock it out of here. All right, here goes the last pass. Seven, four, six. So we're just four thousandths too small. That'll be just fine. Okay, I've got it in the vise, and I've got it. Uh, I think I have it straight this direction. What I did was, it's kind of square on the bottom right here, and so I took this V block and lined it up in that, and then clamped it in. So I think I've got it pretty good that way. So now I'm just going to um, use my edge finder to get these dialed in. Okay, so I'm getting ready to drill it out to a number seven uh, drill bit, and that is the uh, size for a 1420, uh, oh, sorry, a quarter 20 uh, tap. All right, so now I'm getting ready to tap it. I'm gonna start out with a plug tap, and then I have a bottoming tap in this size, since these are blind holes. There's a cartridge here uh, that goes in the bottom, and so I'm getting ready to uh, put that hole in, and I'm already lined up uh, front to back, so I just put the, the uh, size drill bit in here, uh, but I'm going to take it out and put a spotting drill. I was just trying to get the hole lined up. All right, 
Now we're going to go to a depth of an inch and three quarters. I've got to drill the hole uh, to put the copper pipe in. Okay, I've cut the sprue off of our cap and I've got it mounted in the three jaw chuck and I'm just going to flatten off the top. Alright, so I just hollowed this out uh, with a boring bar. I don't know how much of it I got. I think I well, didn't tape any of it, but that's to hold the oxalic acid in the cup before you dump it in. I've got the temperature set at 230 degrees Celsius. Um, after some research, I found that that's the temperature that most people run these at. Um, and people will, are going to look at that and say, well, you know, that's above the temperature you're supposed to heat oxalic acid. But what happens, I think, is when you put it in there, um, it it cools off um, the uh, cylinder that it's in, and so it doesn't actually the oxalic acid doesn't actually hit that temperature. I think it's kind of like you know when you boil water um, until you get it all boiled off, and that, it's not going to get above you know that 212 degrees. Okay, so we're at 2:30, and I've got my mask on. Let me move you back here where you can see. And let's put it in there and see what we get. I've got a half a teaspoon of oxalic acid in here. Okay, I think that did really well. Let's pull that lid off and see what's in there. There is a little drip in here wet. The bottom is dry, so there's just a little bit dripping off that lid. Just a little tiny bit. The rest of it's just an empty container. The temperature during that time went down to uh, 200. It's now starting to climb back up. Okay, so here it is finished, and um, we just tested it as you saw. This is what the inside looks like. It's just as clean as it can be. I mean, there's some residue, little you know, black stuff down in there. I guess that's probably oxide of some sort. Uh, but all of that burned up. Um, the uh, now there's probably questions about what's in this box right here and basically all that's in this box is this right here which is a berm b-e-r-m-e r-e-x dash c100 temperature controller and it also comes with um, with a uh, um, thermocouple to know what the temperature is. It, it needs to read the temp temperature and then it sends that voltage to a, a cartridge which is, uh, this is a thermal cartridge right here that we put inside of there. So it heats that and then it senses the temperature here, um, senses the temperature here and so it energizes this when it's too cold and then goes back and forth until it gets the temperature to whatever you set it there on the front. Now I'm not going to cover how this was wired. Um, 
I went to a lot more trouble than I needed to because I wanted a box that I could use for different things. So all of this, you know, unplugs. I can, you know, I can pull the pull it all loose from the box like that. But this unit um, right here, I'll I will tr put some links um, in the description for what I can on. I'll put you know this controller in the link and then. Um, some of these these other parts, uh, maybe this cartridge. The problem is, is these cartridges, you just need to uh, search for a heating cartridge. This is a 300 watt one, and then whatever size you need to fit in there. I know I'm not giving enough detail on this for someone to actually build one. Um, I'm trying to give enough ideas. When I searched to try to build one, I couldn't find really any information. And so, um, you know, if, if you can't really figure this out on your own, you're probably going to have trouble uh, building it from anything that I would give you and the um, to do a video to show you exactly how it's all wired up would be really tedious because you can't even see inside this box it was really hard for me to fit things in there um, and that kind of thing so this is really just more of an idea of if you kind of have the abilities to do this kind of thing to kind of give you some uh, ideas on on how you might do it anyway I hope this was at least interesting to you or helpful in some way thank you for watching